Hi everyone, this is Evgeny, and today we continue exploring land graph framework. So previously, or in general, we learned a lot of concepts already. We know a human in the loop, we know about the memory, uh, we know about prioritization, so a lot of basic stuff we know about already. And today we are trying to extend our knowledge by introducing a totally new series. So welcome, land graph advanced. Uh, okay, and today uh, I'm gonna tell you something about pre-built agents and uh, so what's the idea basically? Uh, the idea is that when you're constructing your graphs, the structure, the architecture of a graph is pretty standard from the case to case and uh, basically you are building the same pattern all the time. Like for example, let's take a look at this uh, generic agent ar architecture I showed you in one of the previous lessons in our introduction series and what do we have here it's kind of uh, reacting uh, it's called react uh, so you take the action for example lm uh, it realizes okay there is a need for tool call it uh, send a request for tool call tool call send back response and uh, then observation happens and then the reasoning and then LM can decide either go back to tools or uh, it can generate the response and send it to user. So this is pretty typical architecture of the agent and uh, it's so widely used that there is a pre-built agent for that. Uh, first of all, let's just recap what we had in the previous introduction series and we are going to use this low-level APIs for that. Uh, so how it looks like in general, look at that. We have to define tools and that's the necessary step everywhere, right? It could be tools or it could be MCP tools as well. And uh, we are going to talk about uh, fetching stock data and analyzing it. So I do have two functions here and I, let me just define it, right? Then we have to bind the tools to the LLM and this is the way how the model realizes which tool can be used uh, and useful in some cases based on the description. Uh, and here look at that, I'm creating an LLM, simple one, then I'm binding tools to the LLM and also let me just compile it. And then finally we have all the pieces together and it's time to create agent node. So we do have a system, uh, assistant system message uh, which describes the way how our agent should behave and we define it in a node assistant. And the only thing it does, it, it makes an invocation call to the LMS tools providing the system message and the something like request from the user. And we know already that based on this schema, what happens uh, if LLM realizes, okay, there is a need for two call, then the two call will be made and response back and reasoning and all this stuff happens, right? So let's define the node as well. And it's this one. And then finally, we can define the graph. So what's happening here, we are defining state graph as a message states, list of messages. We are creating set of nodes like assistant. We have the tool node as well for toolbox. And we have routing mechanism, right? And if I compile it, we will have the same, exactly the same view how it looks like. So it starts here, goes to assistant. It goes either to tool or to the end and from tool back to assistant and the reasoning happens again and the assistant generates the response. And uh, if I try to run it, uh, let's say uh, what's the current financial state of Tesla? Uh, two things, my expectation would be that two things should happen. First of all, uh, it should realize that Tesla is a company and for fetching the financial data it needs to have the stock symbol and the first tool call will happen. And then having this stock symbol next to call will happen for fetching real financial state and then back to assistant and assistant has all the data to generate the report and then it goes, it generates it and goes to the end, right? So this is the expectation. So if I run it, let's just uh, try and see if it works. And here we are, right? Uh, first of all, this is my user request. We saw it already. Then we have the Tesla uh, tool call, look up stock symbol for Tesla. And the response is this TSLA and then another tool called fetch stock data for TSLA and a lot of uh, data was fetched from the internet. Let me just scroll it through and based on the data the agent was able to generate a report. 
Like we don't care much about the details of the report, just the basic idea is clear, right? So this works as expected, but take a look at that. For realizing this pretty simple functionality, what we have to do, uh, mostly we had to define all the uh, graph, the agent manually. Uh, like we define the node, we define the graph, all the conditional ages, so when, why, uh, we define it to node, to box, all this kind of stuff. And uh, on production, you can dramatically skip all this uh, boil plate code, right? Because we have pre built agents, and look at that. This is something I want to show you. It's more or less the same code, right? What you have here, you have a pre built and you have function create react agent. And here you're providing the model, and this is our simple LLM, so it, it's not binding yet to the tools, right? We are providing a list of tools as well, and these are our functions, that's clear. Well, we still have to define them, right? And then we need, or no, we don't need, but we can, if you want, we can provide the system message for our system, and we do have it already. But practically that's it, we have the agent back, so it was pre-built, and it's, it was taken from this React architecture. So if I compile it and display the graph, look at that. The same small snippet generated for us exactly the same graph already. And this is something you can reuse. So it's really beauty of uh, using the pre-built agents in the production. And if we give it a try, like it was the agent, and the same question was the current financial state of Tesla. Well, that should be clear, right? The same kind of algorithm happens. So two two calls and then uh, reasoning is the result. So it was a Tesla and it's TSLA and uh, fetch stock data row and uh, the same, a lot of data, right? And and, 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 and we have some response back. All right, uh, but what for example, if I ask the second question, like, uh, so uh, do you think this is a good idea to buy this stock? And the tricky part here is, is what, what, what's the stock in the context, right? We don't have any context for this graph. And if I run it, look at that. Uh, we have, well, it really depends on which stock you're looking at and what your goal are goals are, right? If you tell me the company, but we did already, we know that this is Tesla, right? And from the introduction series, we know that we need to introduce here a memory concept. And for using this low level API, it will be pretty clear, right? We would add the memory, we would define it when we define the graph, but uh, which way we can proceed here. And it's pretty simple, look at that. Uh, this create react agent function has a lot of, like really huge amount of parameters you can reuse for constructing graph. And this time we need this check pointer. So we define a new check pointer and for the easy case, we pick the in-memory saver and this one we reused already and practically that's it. So I'm compiling the graph, uh, it's agent with memory and it's the same, right? Memory is not shown, but we know that it's part of the graph already. And uh, now we can try and invoke it. So what's happening here, the same kind of question, we do have a config this time, uh, it's, uh, we have to provide some context information like thread ID, for example, right, and uh, we run it. And this is the first time, and uh, that's clear, right, we would have the same kind of advice about Tesla. We, we saw it already, we have two tool calls and then reasoning back, and we have some information from the LLM, right. Uh, but this time we have memory in place already and while we're providing config here and asking the second question about this stock, uh, well, it should realize, okay, that this stock means Tesla. And if I run it again, look at that. Uh, the previous dialog is here because it's part of the memory this time and uh, what do you think about well, this stock and it really depends and but it knows this is Tesla right now Tesla has a solid presence in the electric vehicle market. So uh, this time we have chatbot with memory and again just single parameter right um, and in general uh, a lot of parameters, what you can do, for example, I'm putting here some links for you for double checking, like you can see the visualized version of your agent based on different options, you can go just here. And if I open it, so this is the classical graph we saw it already, a uh, list of features you can enable, disable, and you have some explanation here for the features as well. 
And this is the classical graph we saw already. Like, for example, I can disable tools. I don't need it at all. Like, my graph doesn't need it. And in that case, look at that. We have the single node A agent. It's kind of chatbot already without any additional functionality, right? Uh, you can put some hooks like pre-model, post-model, for example, for, uh, it says for post-model, it uh, can be invoked for grabbing human in the loop, for example, right? And we will see it in the next lessons how you can do this, really. Uh, but uh, if you click it, you have the hook and you can program it as well, but it's automatically built for you. Okay, you have the post hook, right? And uh, it's interesting if you enable tools back, then your graph becomes a very uh, complicated shape right now, right? And I can enable in response format, and this is a structured response. We also had a lesson about that, a couple of lessons in the introduction section. So this is the graph you have automatically from pre-building, just setting up the parameters of that. Uh, you see, we have start, we can do some pre-processing uh, stuff, right? Uh, then it goes to the agent, we have some post-processing, like human in the loop, for example, that was mentioned in the description, that it could go back and the, try the agent again, right? And here we can decide, now we go to the tools and then this cycle again. So you, you just build the whole thing automatically. This is my message I'm trying to, to give you, right? So basically that's it for uh, pre-built agent. It was a first look. Uh, in the next lessons, we'll give it a try and uh, check maybe a human in the loop or some other additional parameters. But so far, I'm providing some reference links here. You can check it or, for example, if you're working, if you forget something, you can go back to this video and uh, check the links uh, in, the, in the Git repository as well. All right, uh, that was me, Evgeny. Thanks for watching till the end. Uh, again, this was the first lesson, the first video in advanced series where we are going to show you some additional techniques, some additional possibilities of a graph, like more complex topics we are going to look at. And today we have this pre-built agents, the first step, how you can dramatically make your work easier without this boiler plating all the time, the same pattern, which is practically like uh, well known and you don't have to repeat it all the time. Well, and again, Evgeny, thank you for watching. See you later. And until then, see you and bye-bye.